Hello and welcome to this tutorial. I'm Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com and today we're going to be looking at creating a waving flag in the 2D animation area of Blender using a stroke system. So sit back, relax, grab some popcorn and get ready to learn something. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to start, start up our file so that we are ready to draw in 2.8. So one way you can do that is by going into the 2D animation tab at the top or an alternative way is when you start up the file, so file, new, you can set it to a default. So 2D animation sculpting VFX. So for our example, we're going to use 2D animation. And because a lot of people requested, I'm just going to turn on the shortcut VRs. There we go. So now you're going to be able to see exactly what buttons I am pressing. Although it's not going to be that much. It's just going to be mostly mouse clicks. But it's there now for your viewing. So the first things first, we're going to want to create a flag in 2D. So I'm just going to rename this stroke flag. Then I'm going to come down here to layers. I'm just going to delete these two layers because I don't really uh, like the naming conventions and I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call this draft. So I'm just going to draw a quick flag. Really actually don't have to uh, draw that pre-established wave in it. I'm just doing that because <laughs> that's how I like to do things. Okay. A very basic flag. In fact, let me just there we go. There we go. So got my draft. Then I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to call this the fill. After that, I'm going to come down here to my context material tab, and I'm going to create a new material so that I'm able to fill my flag with that. So I'm going to set it to royal. I can spell royal blue. And I'm going to turn off the stroke. And I'm going to turn on the fill. Then I'm going to make sure that the style is set to solid. And I'm going to set that color to a real nice blue. That looks good. I'm just going to come here and I'm going to kind of trace that line. Ever so slowly. Excellent. Now I'm just going to come up to my layers again, which can be found in my stroke context data, object data. And I'm just going to hide that for now. Now you see that it's actually really jaggedy. Now one way we can actually mitigate this is coming up here to the brush options. And we can actually create an active smooth while we're doing it. Oops and make sure that you're actually on the right layer. And you can see that creates a really nice smooth. Now, if you haven't done that already, we can actually fix this quite simply by coming up here to our interaction type and just changing it to sculpt mode. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to come down here to this tool, which is the smooth tool. And then you're just gonna go over your drawing and you should notice that it begins to smooth out those really harsh points. So this is really good. This is the same input set as the normal sculpt mode. So if I press F, I can increase the brush size. Shift F, which is going to increase the strength. So I'm just gonna go over my very poor drawing like so. Excellent. Now I'm just gonna come back up here and go back into draw mode. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to come up here and create a new detail. I'm then going to want to set it so that it's going to use the layer below it as a mask. So what that means is if I grab a new brush here and I start drawing, it's only going to be visible, our strokes, in the area that we've masked off with the layer below it. So in this case, our royal blue flag. This is very useful for creating detail paths. So I'm gonna come back over here to my materials tab. 
And I'm just going to create a sort of gold trim material. Again, checking fill, unchecking stroke, unless of course you would like to keep the stroke, it's entirely up to you. And I'm actually going to set it to gradient. Now the gradient system in the 2D animation isn't that great at the moment, but for our purposes, you know, we're just going to... Let's just test this out. Whoops, daisies, I forgot about that. X factor. Yeah, location. I think zero should be fine. You can play around with these values. I might bump up the scale though. Now here's the problem that I want to illustrate. If you're doing many strokes with a gradient texture, it's going to create that gradient texture as a local uh, sort of um, material, which isn't what we want. So what we're going to have to want to do is we're going to want to do it in one stroke. We want the material And there we go, we got our gold trim. I actually just might just play around with the values just a little bit more. One, one, yeah, that's okay. Probably wanna keep the scale at about one. It's going to, now I'm just gonna draw in a little mast for our flag so that it can flutter on it. So I'm gonna come up here to a new layer and I'm gonna call this mast. I'm gonna make sure that it's above the detail layer and above the fill layer, and I'm not gonna check it so that it's using the mask value. Then I'm gonna just come down to my materials and go create a wood material. And I'm just gonna set this to a nice sort of brown. Excellent. Now, one thing that we could use for our mask is we could actually use our line tool or our box tool. For this example, I'm going to use the box tool. I'm just going to come over here. Whoops. If you make a mistake like that, you can actually just use the G key and just drag it to where you want it. Then you can use these yellow points here to edit your change. Once you're happy with your edit, you're able to press enter and that's going to set that uh, object in place, so now it's an actual stroke. I'm also going to add a little circle at the top here. And let's begin again. Enter. That yeah, looks okay. Okay, we've got our very basic flag, and now I'm going to want to animate it. So, one way we could animate this is using a follow through. Uh, animation where we draw each new frame as a different one. Instead, we're actually going to use Blender this time to automate the entire process. Okay, then I'm just going to come out of my draw mode, go into object mode, and then I'm going to add a lattice. So I'm going to come down here, add a lattice. It comes up here, just drag it in here. I'm just going to actually change the world color just a bit so I can actually see the thing. Okay, excellent. I'm just gonna increase the size. Increase its depth. Excellent. And then I'm just going to edit the resolution of the lattice. Really, because it's 2D animation, we don't really need any points this way. Uh, what we really need is points uh, 
along our view port service whoops so not the vertical we could do the width as well excellent so we could have our ladder set up and I'm just going to call this flag waving lattice excellent now I'm going to come back over to my 2d object and now I'm actually going to set uh, a few vertex points come down here to vertex groups and I'm going to add a vertex group now what we can do is we can go into edit mode like in any other object in Blender and we'll see that we have our object. I don't want the mask to be a part of this uh, vertex group that's, that's going to be affected by this lattice operation. So I'm just going to hover over one of my flag parts. I'm going to press L to select it all. Shift L and L again. So let's just make sure that we got our selection by pressing G and moving, we do. And now what I can do is and I can assign uh, my selection to the group with a weight of one. So that means 100%. And I'm just gonna call this group flag. Excellent, so I can come out of object mode now and come up here to my 2D modifiers. Then I'm just going to create a lattice modifier set the object to flag waving lattice, which is the lattice that we just created, and set the vertex group to flag, which is the vertex group that we just created. We could have also done it via passes. So if you have a moving uh, 2D object within your animation, that probably may have been a better way to go. However, for, this per for the purposes of this tutorial, the vertex group is just fine. Okay, so we have our flag lattice set up. Now, if we notice, if I move any point on this lattice, the flag should move and the mast should stay where it is. Now, what we're going to do to create the flag waving effect is we're actually not going to animate any point on the lattice itself. We're going to add a modifier to the lattice. We're going to add a simple wave modifier. So now if I press Alt A, or for some of you in 2.8 using the default 2.8 spacebar, you should see that our flag is waving. However, you may notice a slightly big problem, and that is that the flag isn't actually looking like it's tethered to the mask. Another thing is that it may be trying to move in a Y motion. So we're just gonna check the Y motion off. So we're getting that real nice X transformation. So the wave is traveling along the X axis. We can play around with these settings, but right now we're just gonna leave them as is, except for one, the start position. And before we edit that one, I'm just gonna add a new object and we're gonna add an empty. And I'm gonna call this empty wave animation start then I'm going to come over here to my lattice and set the start position to wave animation to start position. And then I'm just going to drag it out to the front of the wave. And then I'm just going to set that fall off to. As you can see, as I stretch that out, you'll see that the uh, modifier is being applied in the direction uh, from our uh, little null object over there. I'm just gonna get it to maybe one meter, I find that works. There we go. And now we can just edit uh, our, our wave animation. So there's nice, Okay, it's looking pretty good, I feel. We've got our automated wave animation going along. Now we might wanna add a bit of variance to this um, animation. So one thing that we can actually do is we can add in curves. So I'm just gonna bring up my dope sheet and I'm gonna change it to a curved graph editor. Then I'm actually going to just press I on the speed and the width and making sure that I'm pressing my ladders to bring up my properties that I just added. 
I can now uh, influence these by bringing up my toolbar and going into the modifiers tab and adding a noise modifier. So now what we should notice is that this value here, speed, as we can denote via the red, is oscillating. Now it's oscillating in a way that's very fast and quite unnatural. So we're going to want to increase the scale of things. And we want to reduce the strength. This is a very subtle effect. We do not want to go overboard with this. Maybe, maybe just a bit lower, maybe 0 0.3, and then we'll just increase that. And then I'm going to just copy that modifier, plug it into the width, and just phase it. Now we're just going to make sure that it looks good. Now what I'm doing here is this, this is just one way that you can add variance to the wave modifier so that it doesn't look like it's a uniform cycle. Excellent. So let me just hide that lattice and let's just check how it's looking. There's a bit of flickering here and there. I'm not sure if that will actually show up in the render or not. I hope not. But you have to realize that the stroke system in Blender is still a quite a large working process. Now we're going to just make sure that all of our uh, collection that we have that is affecting this wave animation is going to be linked to our wave object. So I'm just going to make sure that my wave object is the active selection. This is denoted via the um, lighter color highlight whereas the others are dark colored. And then I'm going to press Control P to parent them, and I'm going to parent to object. Now, when I move the flag, all of the objects should be staying relative to that flag. So now I can actually move this flag, and we should have our animation still functioning properly, which is exactly what we want. Uh, if you would like to duplicate it, all that we can do is actually create a collection instance of our collection. And there we have it, we have two flags. And I can move this in the Z space, get a new one. Look at all these wonderful flags. And there. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, smash that like button. And if you've learned something new, consider subscribing for more content like this. Also, if you would like, you can visit my website at falzonfantasy.com for a more dedicated experience in learning tutorials, Blender, and other types of software. It's also a work in progress, so leave a comment down below or send me an email telling me what I could do to improve the website experience. This is Hayden Falzon from falzonfantasy.com, signing off.